survival of the fittest. For many people, this phrase is synonymous with evolution. But we see in nature that sometimes creatures can act altruistically, meaningfully hurting their own survival and reproduction chances to help others. In this video, we're going to build some simulations to get a better understanding of which kinds of altruistic strategies work and which don't. All right, let's jump right in with a simulation. We'll start with the world from the video on simulating natural selection. In this world, blob creatures start each day at the edge of the world. In the morning, food appears and the blobs go out to eat. The amount of food a blob finds before running out of energy and returning home determines whether it dies, survives to the next day, or reproduces, passing its genes on to another creature, except that the genes might mutate. Now let's give the creatures the ability to be altruistic. Here's how it'll work. If a blob creature finds two pieces of food and still has energy left, it can take one of two routes. It can look out for itself and its descendants by deciding to go home early and reproduce, or it can be altruistic, risking its guaranteed offspring to go and give a piece of food to another creature who hasn't eaten yet. And yeah, they regurgitate it. Nature's gross. At the beginning of our simulation, half of the creatures will have a copy of an altruistic gene, causing them to be altruistic every time they get the chance, and the other half of creatures will have copies of a competing, non-altruistic gene. When we let this simulation run, what do you think will happen? Will the selfish creatures take over, or will the altruists triumph through teamwork? Or maybe they'll stay mostly balanced? Pause here and make a prediction. Prediction made? All right. Okay, well, that was kind of sad. It turns out that unconditionally sacrificing your offspring isn't a great long-term strategy. So how can we give the gene for altruism a better shot? Well, what if we make acts of kindness a bit less punishing to the altruistic creatures? Say, by letting the creatures keep some reproduction chance when they give their food away. 50% instead of the previous 0%. So the cost of giving food away is half of an offspring on average. Maybe the food was already partially digested, Again, nature's gross, but ickiness aside, this makes the interaction net positive instead of just net neutral, which is actually pretty common in the real world. Okay, so let's restart our simulation with this lower cost altruism in place. Now what would you predict? Hmm? Hmm. All right, it still doesn't work it seems. Remember that for a gene to be successful in the long term, it needs its copies to keep replicating. The problem with a gene for purely unconditional altruism is that it helps copies of competing genes as much as it helps copies of itself. And its competitors don't return the favor. So a successful gene for altruistic behavior would need to find some way of giving more help to itself than to its competitors. Even if we're making nice creatures, the gene itself still needs to be selfish. How could a gene for altruism find a way to let its copies coordinate with each other? One way is to combine two different traits into the altruism gene. First, some kind of unique, outwardly detectable trait that can let the gene be recognized, and second, the trait to be altruistic toward creatures who have that detectable trait. So let's do that. Let's add an outwardly detectable trait to our altruistic creatures. The classic version of this is a green beard, and that's a fun thing to put on the blob, so let's stick with that. So the next simulation we'll try will start out with half creatures that have the green beard gene, who will be altruistic toward other creatures with green beards, and half creatures without green beards that will neither help nor get help. Again, pause to make a prediction. Are you convinced that the green beards should do well? Or might there be another problem? Let's see. Cool. I was honestly a little bit worried before running these simulations that it still wouldn't work, but it does. Maybe you're not that surprised and that's fine, but even if you're not, this is still a pretty cool moment we found at least one kind of gene that can crack natural selection by causing creatures to put others before themselves, even if it's only sometimes. This is called inclusive fitness. The fitness includes all of the copies of the gene, not just the ones inside a particular creature. Don't celebrate too much though, because there's still a problem. Traits like green beard altruism aren't actually very common in nature. There are a few known cases. For example, red fire ant colonies can have more than one competing queen. And apparently, the workers can tell which queens share certain sets of genes with them, and then they kill the queens that don't match, and help the queens that do match. 
That's cool and everything, but there just aren't very many examples like this. It turns out to be pretty rare for one gene to code for two different traits that happen to work together so nicely. And even if that does happen, eventually mutations could produce multiple genes that each code for only one of the traits. So let's set up a simulation to see how it looks when the traits are on separate genes. With the traits on separate genes, they're independent, leading to four possible combinations. A creature can have both, neither, just a green beard, or just altruism toward green beards. Time to make another prediction. Okay, so as I kind of hinted at before that simulation, the coordination between copies of the altruism gene is broken, and then the non-altruistic creatures dominate. But hey, green beards are still cool. So we've only gotten one kind of altruism to work so far, and it's a kind that depends on a rare coincidence and doesn't appear much in nature. There's gotta be something better, right? Well, in fact, there is. It's known as kin altruism, or often kin selection. Instead of targeting some outwardly detectable, genetically determined trait, this kind of altruism targets family members, whatever their traits may be. So let's simulate one final version of the altruism gene that causes creatures to be altruistic toward their direct parents and direct children. Now, the whole point of this kind of altruism is that we can't see which creatures have which genes. So this time, let's hide the graph and try to predict the results together while the simulation runs. The key concern with kin selection is that even close family members aren't guaranteed to carry the same gene. So the altruism gene has to do some gambling. For any kind of gambling strategy to work well in the long run, the cost of playing needs to be lower than the payoff for a win times the chance that you'll actually win. Right, the average payoff needs to be higher than the cost. In the context of kin selection, you'll hear this called Hamilton's rule. Looking at the simulation and thinking of the altruism gene as the gambler, the 5% mutation chance means that there's a 95% chance that parents and children share the same version of the altruism gene. So that's our chance of winning. The cost of being altruistic, as we decided before, is half of an offspring on average. And the benefit to a creature who receives food is one, since that food is converted directly into offspring. These numbers aren't exact, since both creatures involved do have other chances to get food, but this should get us pretty close. And comparing, the expected payout is almost twice the cost, so even with the inexact cost and payoff numbers, it seems pretty clear that the altruism gene is going to do well here. And this is where I realized that altruism is an illusion, and my heart descended into darkness. Only for a little bit though. Once I dug in, collected some data on what was happening, and found more precise numbers for the cost and benefit, I figured out what was wrong. It's that Hamilton's rule is a lie. Which, I'm sorry to say, is going to require its own video. But for now, suffice it to say that by lowering the cost of the altruistic act, and cranking up the likelihood of winning by lowering the mutation chance, we can find a setup where a gene for kin selection tends to flourish. This is the kind of altruism we see all over the place in nature. From parents caring for their young, to sterile worker bees helping the queen, inclusive fitness can be naturally selected. All right, we spent a lot of time in the weeds in this video, so before we go, let's zoom out and remind ourselves of the difference between a creature and its genes. The genes involved in altruism are still selfish. The only ones that survive are the ones that are able to coordinate their own copies. But this doesn't mean the creatures themselves are selfish. They genuinely care about and make sacrifices for each other, whether it's because they're family or because they just can't resist the look of a green beard. See you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to support more of them, you can help by subscribing, sharing with someone else who you think might also like the video, or if you're so inclined, by supporting directly on Patreon. In any case, thanks again.